Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So this is very exciting because it is the first week of our flight mechanics class. So um, as we talked about earlier when we were going over the syllabus, the typical cadence of what we're going to do every week is we are going to spend a little bit of time every week talking about a roadmap of where we're going in terms of what technical topics we're going to be covering. And then I'd also like to spend a little bit of time going over the homework for this week just so we know where we're going and everyone is pushed off in the right direction to get the week started. So with that being said, let's jump over to um, the roadmap. So like I said, this is exciting. It's week number one of our 10 week flight mechanics course. And the way we're going to start this off is uh, I've got a very simple video right here. This is optional. If you'd like to see um, a little bit of a refresher in terms of some simple vector mechanics, if you want to remember how to do things like an inner product or a vector projection or a cross product or things like that, feel free to check out this video. Again, this is totally optional. Um, I'm going to assume that most people are already familiar familiar with this type of operation, but if you want a little bit of a refresher, feel free to check this video out. We are then going to go ahead and jump into some of uh, the actual technical meat of this class, and we're going to use some of these simple vector mechanics to develop what are known as rotation matrices, and this is one of the core concepts of this class. We're going to be using rotation matrices all over the place and in a lot of different situations, so this is a real important uh, uh, d discussion to have. Um, this video here, it's uh, you can see it's 45 minutes long, and what we're going to do here is we're going to derive a rotation matrix about a single axis. We're going to do this around a, a Z axis in this case. Um, I just want to point that out because uh, in the future in this class, we're going to be looking at rotating about multiple axes, one after the other in sequential fashion. So this is just laying the framework for that down the road. So again, this is an, impro an important discussion to have. Um, after that, I would also like to start talking about some other more complicated vector mechanics. So this is what's known as Rodrigue's rotation formula. It's going to help us rotate a vector in space around another vector. And again, this is one of these situations where I think if you just watch the video, it's going to make a lot more sense. I have some pictures, I have some diagrams, I have some props. That's going to make the picture a lot more clear than me just trying to explain it. So let me just say, watch this video. We're going to use it in the homework a little bit, and we will build on it in the future. In fact, we're going to build on it probably right here in the next video where we're going to start looking at vector derivatives. So how can we talk about how a vector changes um, with respect to another frame or with respect to time? Um, how do rotating reference frames translate with respect to one another if you have a given velocity vector which describes that translation and uh, velocity. So again, another one of these videos that might um, be a little bit easier just to watch because again, I've got a couple of animations to help visualize what's going on here. So watch this video. So uh, it's a little bit lighter uh, in terms of the technical content this week because we're just getting started. Um, that being said, I know some of these concepts are going to appear somewhat mathematically abstract, but I guarantee you when we start looking down here into week two and week three, we're going to be building on a lot of these concepts, so it is important to kind of uh, follow. So that being said, this is the roadmap of where we're going. Again, go in, click on each of these links, um, go to the videos. On each of those videos, I'll maybe just refresh your memory, right? For example, the um, rotation matrix video, this is what it looks like. It will bring you to this video. You'll be able to see, um, yeah, diagrams, things like that. And more importantly, if you come down to the description of the video, whoops, excuse me, you come to the description of the video, there's a link right here to a GitHub page which will allow you to download um, lecture notes and if there are uh, code like MATLAB or Simulink models that go along to help demonstrate things, that will also be available. So again, it should be a one-stop shop to find all the material you need um, for a given week's lecture or module. So uh, yeah, I think that's the game plan for the technical discussion. Let's take a moment to look at how the homework is going to reinforce some of these ideas. Okay, so if I pull up homework number one, here it is. Um, let's take a look, and I think you're going to see that a lot of the homework problems mirror the lecture material pretty closely. So what I would recommend doing is, let's go through the homework right now, just so you know what's coming down the pike, so that when you're watching the videos, you'll know where to perk up your ears and where you're going to need some part of the lecture material to, to work on the homework. So for example, problem one is, I would just like you to derive um, some of these rotation matrices. So this first one is a rotation matrix about a z-axis. 
through some angle which we're going to call psi and in fact this is exactly what i do in this video so in this video i mean problem 1a this first part is pretty much just watch a video and pair it back what i do on the board just make sure you can walk through the derivation and you're comfortable with it and then extend that idea about rotating about an z-axis to rotating about a y-axis or rotating about an x-axis. So all I'm asking for in right here is just do the derivation to show me how do you get this matrix, this ma oops, sorry, huh, I'm having a hard time select it, this matrix and this matrix. So just derive those three matrices, okay? And then for part B, I would like you to just show that uh, any given rotation matrix, namely these three, any of those are a unitary matrix. Um, and again, if you need a little bit of a refresher on what the deal with a unitary matrix is, watch the video or kind of look it up in Wikipedia. It's got a great definition. Um, and if you answer part B, that should give you some idea about part C. Namely, uh, if I need to calculate the inverse of any of these matrices, um, how can I do that? And maybe what might be more important to think about is what does the inverse of this matrix actually represent, right? If you are given a rotation matrix here, which means something, and again, once you watch this video, I think it will very, be very clear what a rotation matrix does. Now ask yourself, what does the inverse of a rotation matrix do? Might be something interesting to think about. Okay, so that's problem one. Problem two is, uh, this is really simple. <laughs> um, don't overthink this. I would just like you to prove to yourself that these matrix properties hold, uh, excuse me, these vector mechanics properties hold. So namely, if you have something like a cross product here and you have um, a cross product and then you do the cross product and then multiply by some scalar number alpha, show that that is the same thing as these other two expressions. So this is sometimes referred to as the associative property of a cross product and also show the distributive property of a cross product. So again, this should be real fast. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and uh, do a forward calculation if you want to just prove this to yourself. Um, don't think about this too hard. Again, if you need to refresh your memory on how cross products work, feel free uh, right here. This optional video will talk about cross products and that should give you all the ammunition you need to tackle problem number two. Now, problem three is kind of interesting is a lot of times people think about cross products as this funny little mnemonic of, you know, you set up a determinant and you put the IJK across the top row, then you put the second, the, the first vector across the second row, the second vector along the third row, and then you do this funny subdeterminant thing. Again, feel free to watch this video if you don't remember how to calculate a cross product by hand. You could do that. Or you can also express a cross product as a matrix operation um, as discussed right here. So again, don't overthink this. Uh, go ahead and just do this calculation and prove to yourself that this is true, that you could indeed uh, write a cross product as a matrix product instead. And then just extend that idea like, okay, now if you have two cross products, daisy chained one next after the other, how could you write that as uh, a series of matrix operations? Um, okay, that's problem three. Okay, problem four is uh, very closely related to lecture 1E or the Flight Mechanics 3 module. So again, you watch this video and all I would like you to do is pretty much just, this is what I show in the video is how to get this expression. So really problem 4A is again, when I say derive, that's almost just like repeat back what happened in the video. Again, just to make sure you're comfortable with every step. Um, and then I'm gonna ask you some questions like, you know, does this vector n have to be a unit vector in this equation? Um, can you get away with a non-unit vector? Might you have to modify this equation if it was not a unit vector? Things like that. Um, okay, and then uh, problem one, uh, 4c, if this is true, this is Rodrigue's rotation formula, can you go ahead and get the equation of Coriolis? Okay, so uh, that is, if you watch the equation of Coriolis video down here, I think it'll be clear what's going on. So again, just kind of work that out. And then problem five is, um, again, this is one of these where it, I'll, I'll let people play with this a little bit. Once we start talking about these vector derivatives, you're going to understand what this, this, this left superscript means. So again, I don't think there's I, I don't want to talk about this too much until you've had a chance to watch this video. I think this notation and what I'm asking is going to make a lot more sense once you've watched the video. So again, um, if, if I would encourage people come to office hours if you have questions. I'm happy to talk about this a little bit, but after you've watched this video, just so we can have a uh, informed discussion on that. 
Okay, and that's pretty much the technical work for this homework. Problem six is really not a real problem. Um, I just want to make sure that everyone has a copy of MATLAB with the appropriate toolboxes installed. And again, on the syllabus, we talked about what toolboxes we're going to be using in this class. So just make sure you've got access to MATLAB. I just want people to, to, to be ready. Um, next week, we're going to have some homework that's going to need MATLAB. So I just want people to get things out of the way now. Um, again, so what you're turning in on problem six is really nothing. Just a one-liner saying something like, yes, I have verified I have MATLAB and the appropriate toolboxes. That will suffice and get you full points for problem number six. Problem seven is totally optional. Um, as we just discussed, MATLAB is going to be a big part of this class. Uh, we're going to use MATLAB and Simulink to build uh, effectively a flight simulator of our aircraft. That's what we're gunning for. So. I'm going to assume everyone is familiar with MATLAB and Simulink. If MATLAB and Simulink is something uh, potentially new to you or something that you didn't get a chance to see in undergrad, um, I'm going to refer you to several of my uh, tutorials here um, and other videos to get up to speed. So that's what these first ones are. And again, this is something I'm going to assume most people have seen in undergrad, right? It's just how to work with MATLAB, how to get matrices going, how to do plotting, what is Simulink. How do you implement ODEs in Simulink? How do you talk between Simulink and MATLAB? Again, you should have already done all this, but if you haven't, feel free to check out some of these videos or come to office hours and discuss. Again, I just need to make sure that everyone has the appropriate prerequisites. So if you're in this class, hopefully you already have these prereqs down. So just watch these if you want a refresher. The thing that is a little bit new that uh, maybe I will encourage people to do is um, Mathematica is another tool that I think is going to be very, very helpful in this class, which is why we talked about it when we went over the syllabus. So this is a little bit more esoteric and uh, not quite as popular as MATLAB. So I would not be surprised if some people have not seen Mathematica before. Um, if you've taken a class with me before, you definitely are, are comfortable with Mathematica. But if not, again, I have some tutorials to get people up to speed. So again, if you go to, to my website and you look for the Mathematica modules, that should be, uh, where is that uh, Mathematica? Right, here we go. Mathematica 1, 2, and 3. You can access those right here to get yourself up to speed with Mathematica quickly. Okay. So with that being said, I know this is a lot going on uh, for the first week, uh, but we've got a lot of material to cover for this class. I'm really excited for it. I hope all of you are as well. Um, let me know if you have questions about the homework or about week one. We'll have office hours, either myself or the TA. Um, I encourage you to come along and uh, ask questions. So with that being said, uh, I think this is probably a great spot to leave it. I think I'll leave it here and hopefully I'll see people in office hours. Okay, thanks everyone. Bye.